Hello and welcome to our session, um, our informational session on the AIDPH fellowship programs. We're going to be talking today about the three fellowship programs that are open for application right now. So welcome and thank you for joining us. We can head to the next slide. So what we'll be talking about today, I'm going to give us a quick welcome and overview of AIDPH. Then we'll talk about our summer advocacy fellowship and then our dental public health leadership academy program and then our federal service immersion program. We can go to the next slide. So a brief overview about the American Institute of Dental Public Health before we jump into our programming. Our mission is to empower our community to advance oral health through science, education, and advocacy, and those three intersect in the fellowship programs that we're talking about today. The vision that we're working towards through this mission is a justice-oriented oral health system. You can go to the next slide. We have four communities of focus at AIDPH. These are communities that have been hi historically excluded, underserved, and marginalized, particularly when it comes to oral health access. These communities include LGBTQIA plus people, veterans, people with disabilities, and people living in rural communities. You can go to the next slide. This graphic shows our academy, which is um, the programming that we deliver, our, our education and leadership programming. This is a great graphic that shows the diversity of programs that we offer. We have everything all the way from a one-time webinar or workshop, um, and we kind of increase our programming in time and capacity. Our goal is to have a diverse range of offerings um, so that folks with different time commitments and availabilities, really everyone has, there's an offering for everyone. What we're talking about today, again, is our fellowship program. This is towards our more intensive programmings. Our fellowships are dedicated curriculum that's explored in longer or more intense terms. Um, people in the fellowship programs earn a certificate as well as a moniker of a fellow of the academy. We can go to the next slide. I want to talk about flash mentoring ahead of our specific programs because flash mentoring is a key component of each of our fellowship programs um, and a really great part of becoming a fellow of AIDPH and, and particip participating in any of our fellowship programs is that you continue to have access to our flash mentoring programs. You also are able to network with folks in other fellowship programs. So the way that these work, this is a, a photo here of actually some in-person mentoring that was taking place during our last year's federal service immersion program. However, typically our flash mentoring sessions are all virtual. We bring leaders in the industry together, often members of our board, members of our corporate leadership council, um, folks that we've been able to network with our experienced staff and, and time in the industry um, to bring um, thought leadership on a variety of topics and really offer our fellows guidance on different career paths and questions. So our topics run, run the gamut and we often have unique and new topics each year, but some of the things we've covered in the past include building your professional network, doing a full CV review and development, um, that's something where we'll typically have several folks come on and break out into small groups for, for intensive review, federal careers and advice on pivoting, taking non-traditional career paths, etc. It's a really wonderful part of our fellowship program. And again, it's not just during, um, you know, if you're doing FSI and it's a week-long program, you have access to a year plus of flash mentoring sessions. We can go to the next slide. So I'm going to start us off by talking about our Summer Advocacy Fellowship Program. This is the program that starts um, the soonest on our calendar and which application is, is due most immediately. So an overview of this program, it's a 10-week opportunity and it does come with a paid stipend. The commitment is about five to seven hours per week and that includes time um, working asynchronously on projects assigned as well as synchronously in different seminars and team meetings. The 2024 fellows will participate in collective and independent advocacy projects that are feasible to complete in the 10 week program. Our, our um, ideal and hope is that these projects are really something that fellows can walk away with of a project that they've worked on in their portfolio, as well as completing something for um, the team's capacity. This program's for new graduates, advanced education students, and incoming and or outgoing dental public health residents with experience in advocacy. We can go to the next slide. 
So what does the program consist of? We'll have bi-weekly seminars and these are put on by experts in the field as well as our staff members. And um, they cover a variety of topics in dental public health, specifically geared towards advocacy. And we'll, um, on the weeks where we're not doing a seminar, we'll do check-ins with team leads um, so that fellows have an opportunity to get to know and network with our leadership, as well as have time to check in on their individual projects. Again, that flash mentoring piece, um, as well as the participation in the advocacy projects in our portfolio. You can go to the next slide. So some of the benefits of the program, um, developing new advocacy tools and skills, as well as those projects that you'll work on to have in your portfolio. This year, um, our fellows will be working on, on a bill bank that is part of our um, advocacy program for people with disabilities and advocating for Medicaid expansion for additional oral health benefits, um, as well as some um, stakeholder toolkits for folks working on veteran oral health in Iowa. Um, you're part of a cohort that gives you ample networking opportunities. Um, I can personally speak having worked with our fellows and actually um, something about me is that I came to AIDPH through fellowship program several years ago. Um, so I can speak personally both from the fellow side as well as um, the staff side that our fellows do stay in touch and continue to come back to AIDPH, continue to work together um, throughout their time in dental public health. So it really is a wonderful networking opportunity, both with your cohort and with our staff and leadership. Um, and again, back to that mentoring sessions, we have those official flash mentoring sessions, but there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one time um, and time with our staff leadership for networking as well. You can go to the next slide. So what are we looking for when we are reviewing applications for this program? We're looking for a robust advocacy skill set with demonstrated expertise. I will say, um, if you have a passion and an interest in advocacy and maybe not as much experience, please still apply and share that information. We really want folks who are committed to making change in dental public health. So please um, still feel free to apply and share that information. A commitment to dental public health and increasing access and equity in oral health care and an overall thoughtfulness and thoroughness in your application. Um, we really wanna hear from you and, and why you're in dental public health, um, your unique perspective and what you think you can bring to the program. So please um, be thoughtful, share yourself, share your unique perspective. We're really excited to see everyone's applications and hear from you and, and why you're interested in the program. We can head to the next slide. So looking at our timeline again, this application, Deadline is right around the corner, May 15th. This is a summer advocacy fellowship, so um, it does happen in the summer months, which is why this application is due so quickly. Um, and it will start at, towards the end of June and it will end towards the end of August. Um, if you have any questions about these applications, please let us know. You can reach out to us via our website, via our programs at AIDPH.org email. Um, let us know what questions you have and we're happy to support along the way. Thanks, Liz, and thank you everyone for joining us um, again for this informational session. I'm going to go over our Dental Public Health Leadership Academy program, which is a 12-month leadership program spanning a variety of topics and has a lot of different aspects to create engagement, build leadership skills and capacity, and ultimately um, gain knowledge around oral health, dental public health, public health generally, and broader leadership skills that can apply to most all health careers. This program is really aimed toward early to mid career professionals. However, you may find as an established career professional that this is something that you're interested in, and ultimately we welcome all applications. Each year, we accept about 20 participants in the cohort and you will go through this 12 month program with a cohort of peers who are really dedicated to building their own leadership skills and expertise. Next slide. So the program features monthly two hour seminars on a wide variety of topics. And the seminar times are ultimately set by the participants. At the beginning of the year, um, we do identify a time that works for everybody, typically on Wednesdays. 
Um, and so just make sure that as you're thinking about this experience, that you have the time and capacity to commit to attending seminars during typical working hours. And also included alongside these seminars are flash mentoring sessions, which Liz reviewed with us earlier. These seminars include a, a mix of didactic information with a heavy emphasis on applying skills um, and challenging ourselves as adult learners through case-based opportunities, hands-on learning, and other types of one-on-one -on -one leadership and peer coaching. As part of this experience, we have different seminar topics each month. And we support all of this, um, all of these seminar topics, again, through a wide variety of engagement. Some of these topics include things like understanding your personal leadership style and how you engage with yourself and others as part of that leadership experience. You'll carry some of those leadership skills and abilities, um, building on your personal leadership style, honing the things that you um, really are successful and find a strengths as part of that session and then carry that out even into identifying what conflict management might look like, what adaptive leadership means for your particular um, set of skills and um, weaving through how to communicate effectively with other people on your team and um, improving your skill set as a leader. So while we're starting our third cohort for the Dental Public Health Leadership Academy, we have heard that our graduates now um, demonstrate a variety of benefits and find a lot of value in this programming that we've begun to really sharpen and strengthen as this cohort and this experience continues. A key aspect of DIPLA includes building competencies that are specific to dental public health, but again, can be applied broadly throughout your career. We really want folks to walk away with a solid foundation in public health policy and the skills to advocate effectively, both in little p policy, um, so organizational policy and broader public health policy. Throughout this experience, you'll gain tools and equip yourself to apply leadership and policy learnings in your current work through a transformation project. And you'll build a network of national leaders along with your peers that you can, in the long term, draw from as you move throughout your career. As an aspect of this program, you do earn CEUs. And after you complete the Leadership Academy, you become a fellow of the AIDPH Academy, as Liz referred to earlier. We take evaluation very seriously in our programs because we want to ensure that the content that we're creating and the curriculum that we are building is inherently useful and beneficial to each person. So throughout our feedback, both this year and last year, we've um, heard very high levels of satisfaction around the ability to connect with peers, growing your personal prof and professional network, and ensuring that the curriculum that we design is very aligned to and attuned to your goals and needs. Um, most importantly, we found that through our faculty and through our flash mentoring sessions that our DIPLA um, candidates and fellows are able to receive a really high level of mentorship, which feels very important. I love this quote from a previous DIPLA participant that says, most valuable to me has been being part of the cohort and the networking opportunities that come from that. And the content has been very valuable, highlighting that the leadership concepts have been ingrained long-term and that DIPLA has helped her consider how to learn and connect with people on a very human level. And we appreciate that feedback. As I mentioned earlier, program eligibility is open to really anyone who wants to build their skills and expertise, although um, early and mid-career professionals are probably going to get the most um, from this particular opportunity. And AIDPH, as always, encourages applicants from traditionally underrepresented and historically excluded communities. The cost for this 12-month program is $2,000 for full-time students. For working professionals not currently enrolled in a full-time educational program, the tuition is $2,500.
some of the things that we look for in DIPLA candidates includes a demonstrated self-awareness of your leadership strengths and abilities, along with the opportunity for growth that you see, an understanding of the importance of how leadership can be applied in dental public health, the thoughtfulness and thoroughness of the answers to the application questions, and most importantly, the ability to commit the necessary amount of time to engage in and complete the program. Applications are due at the end of May, so we are open and available to any questions that you may have about the program. We also have a pretty thorough application guidance document. Um, and after applications are closed, we take time to review them and we should notify applicants of acceptance by the end of June with the cohort calls starting in September of this year. So please let us know if you have any specific questions about DIPLA as you complete that program application. And with that, I will turn it back over to my colleague, Liz. Thank you, Annalise. And um, so I am going to finish out our call by talking about our Federal Service Immersion Program. We can head to the next slide. Um, this is a lovely picture of our last year's cohort in DC. Um, FSI is a week-long immersive learning experience with federal agencies in Washington, DC. Um, we have visits and opportunities to engage with leaders of each agency to learn about the roles and operations. Um, and it's designed for individuals who want to pursue a career in policy, federal service, and or the government. Um, and it's open to students and early to mid-career dental public health professionals. I will also give that a caveat of um, there are some folks, we had some folks last year who may not have necessarily been early to mid-career. They might have been further along in their career, but were maybe making a career pit pivot or shift um, where they had maybe done some more clinical work, some private practice, something else, and want to move into that federal side. Um, so really, it's the, the biggest piece there is for folks who are interested in that type of career path and, and feel that that will be beneficial to learn more about those different pathways. We can go on to the next slide. So but some of the benefits of the program. Um, Folks get to cultivate an understanding of federal agency roles and operations. We're meeting with these agencies one on one um, and seeing their offices and their buildings and really understanding. Um, we get some kind of some in depth information and insider information on how their agencies work, what their programs are. Um, there's different information on different residency opportunities, on different grant funding opportunities. It's a really um, unique experience an opportunity to connect with folks one-on-one. -on -one. So again, understanding those federal career pathways, um, becoming an FSI fellow and an, and an AIDPH Academy graduate, which again, there's lots of networking opportunities. Um, FSI is unique. It's, it's one of our only in-person events and educational programs. And so being together for a week um, in DC is just a very unique, wonderful opportunity for networking. Um, last year was really exciting. We had a very diverse group um, in regards to kind of, we had students all the way up to, again, folks who were maybe much further along in their career and were looking to make a pivot and having that group together, learning and networking together was wonderful to see. There's opportunities to network and connect with those national leaders in dental public health. And we can go to the next slide. So our tentative schedule, again, um, this is a, a, a long, there's a long application and kind of planning process to this. As you can imagine, there's a lot of logistics working with these federal agencies. Um, so we um, do applications fairly early on in the year. Part of that also is gathering everyone's information um, for clearance to get into these federal agencies. Um, so we always list this as tentative. It will get finalized as we move closer to September. Um, but Sunday will be a travel day. We host a meet and greet welcome reception. We'll share a meal, get to know each other a bit, share schedules and materials on Sunday evening as we get ready for an early start on Monday morning. We start off in Rockville, Maryland, which is actually um, just on the outskirts of DC um, and where a lot of these federal agencies are. So we, we kind of focus on those to start. Um, so tentatively right now on Monday, we'll start with HRSA, IHS, and the CDC. Um, and then on Tuesday, we would do visits with NIH, NIDCR, and NLM. 
And on Wednesday, we would go to the FDA and Veterans Affairs. And then this year, um, this is a new part of our programming that we haven't done in the past, um, but we have an optional advocacy day in, in DC. And so um, folks who participate have the option to continue on to Thursday and meet with legislators and share education with them about um, oral health disparities and um, some things that need to change to increase access to dental care, which is very exciting. Um, we'll include as part of that advocacy training on Wednesday evening. Um, so we can go to the next slide. So the logistics and cost, again, this is a week-long in-person event. Um, there is a tuition with this program, which is $1,800. FSI participants are also responsible for scheduling and paying for their travel and lodging at the designated hotel. Um, we will have the hotel secured and finalized around the time that we um, announce our acceptance to the program and let folks know who has gotten into the program. Um, the typical range for the hotel rooms is around $150 to $200. Folks have been very successful in the past with securing funding through um, their organizations, through their schools, through their employers, et cetera. And we do provide um, information and pre-written letters to share with folks for those who are looking to secure funding around this program. Um, that's included in the application guidance document, but we're also happy to provide any additional information or answer any questions that's helpful towards that end. We can go to the next slide. So selection career, criteria. Um, again, a commitment to dental public health and increasing access and equity in oral health care, um, an interest in career working in policy in federal service, government, etc. And that overall thoughtfulness and thoroughness in the answers of your application, we really want to understand your unique, your unique career pathway, your background experience, and, and why you're interested in this program and, and dental public health in particular. So please, please share yourself in your applications. We're very excited to review them. And also, as with all of these, answer any questions along the way. Okay, so our program for FSI Again, it's a fairly long program timeline, and part of that is because of coordination and planning that happens with an in-person event, um, as well as gathering everyone's information um, for security purposes of visiting these federal agencies in person takes a fair amount of time. So we have a long timeline here. Applications are due on May 29th. Again, we're here and available for questions ahead of that due date. And then there's a, a list here of kind of when notifications go out of acceptance. I will note that this is a fairly competitive program. Um, folks, we typically have folks who are accepted and then a list of waitlist folks. So we do ask when you receive your acceptance, we'll provide you information on how to confirm your participation. Um, within a certain timeline um, so that folks who are maybe accepted and unable to participate, we can move on to the waitlist folks. So just be thoughtful um, and thorough in your applications and understand that it is a competitive process. Um, again, we will have hotel information around that same time that we offer acceptance letters. Um, we will have virtual orientation um, and know before you go information ahead of joining each other in person um, in Rockville, Maryland and Washington, D.C. in September um, 16th through 19th. And again, the 15th will be our travel day. We'll do a meet and greet and then get started with our programming. So we can go to the next slide. So this is these QR codes go directly to our applications. You can scan them. You can also access them, this information from our website. If you um, go to AIDPH.org and um, click on our academy, you can scroll down to fellowship and there's the full application guidance document on each of these fellowship programs, which also have links to the application as well as all of this detailed information. Um, we can go to the next slide. This is our website, um, as well as the programs at AIDPH.org. Our ed team manages that email and we're happy to answer any and all questions. Please reach out and let us know. Um, we're super excited to hear from you, from your questions, from your applications. Um, thank you for joining us today and we really look forward to seeing you in these fellowship programs later this year. Have a great day, everyone.